this evening, if you will, take your hymnal and go to page 538. Page 538. Let's stand together. We'll sing all three verses, all three verses. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dew we heap, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, sowing in the sunshine. Sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor rented, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Going forth with weeping, sowing for the master, though the law sustained our spirit often grieves. When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome, we shall come rejoicing. standing for prayer. Amen. Well, certainly want to welcome everyone to the service. Glad you're here. What a blessing it is to uh, just be able to uh, come to a nice, cool place, right? Amen. Thank God for his blessings and thank God for all that he's done for us. Uh, you know, hey, uh, Paul said, in everything, give thanks. Right. Everything. And man, I, uh, that's hard to do sometime, isn't it? Hmm? But, hey, we're going to be true to the Lord. Amen. Now, we got a lot of prayer requests, so uh, we'll take those in just a little bit. And so let's, uh, Clay, if you will, lead us in prayer tonight, please. Amen. You may be seated. Your hymnal again and go to page 530. 530. We'll sing all three verses. <coughs> Work for the night is coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the dew is sparkling. Work mid spring. Oh. 
the night is darkening when man's work is o'er. Amen. Amen. All right, we have a few ushers come. Uh, we'll take the even offering. Even offering. <laughs> The evening offering. There we go. How about that? Um, I was thinking about that verse, and I had to put it in my notes tonight. But John 9, 4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. And this is Jesus. He says, the night cometh when no man can work. And uh, that's what that song's talking about, you know. Um, in other words, seize the opportunity. Take the opportunity that we have uh, to do what God desires for us to do. Amen. All right, let's go Lord and pray for the offering. I'd like Brother Kenny to lead us in prayer for the offering tonight. sing our chorus. The family of God will sing it through and then shake hands and greet one another. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. See, Bernie. 
in your seats. Let's sing it through once more. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sun. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You can be seated. All right, we'll take your bulletin out. If you would, please, just a few announcements. I think I got the right one, September 10th, yeah. And so, uh, Brother Mike left some um, prayer letters, their most recent prayer letter, and some prayer cards in the back if you didn't get one on Sunday. Um, he left those back there for you. They're on the edge of the sound booth, so you can pick those up. Uh, don't forget that. And uh, our Phil America event's going through Saturday, and so there's still plenty of tracks down here in the foyer, and so make sure you're trying to work hard at that. And uh, we can count all the things we pass out on Saturday. Um, when we go help uh, the Jobs, and so of course their Foundations Baptist Church, and they're uh, they've had some official meetings, but they're having an uh, official startup uh, with some get acquainted meetings in October. And so uh, once again, we've committed to go down there on a Monday evening, the first Monday evening in October. But this Saturday uh, at 10 a.m., we're going to be up there trying to help them distribute things, invite folks to these meetings and uh, flyers, Johns and Romans, things like that. And so, um, so we're going to leave the church about 8.45. And so if you want to drive, that's fine. Uh, but just try to meet us here at 8.45. Uh, we've, got, we've got the school bus. We've got the other bus. We've got the van. So we, we can take about as many people as we need to take that show up. If, if people want to ride those things, that's fine. Um, pastor's going to drive the school bus. And, uh, no, no, just kidding. No, we probably won't have to take the school bus. We can probably take the other bus and the, and the van. And uh, they're both air-conditioned. Amen. And uh, I like air conditioning. So we'll, we'll leave the church about 8.45. It's about an hour to get there. We're right across 64, so um, we should be there about 15 minutes early. Uh, everything works out. So um, if you can help us, that would be wonderful. Um, maybe you can send some of your young people. That would be, be fine, too, because we're going we're gonna to provide transportation. So uh, whoever can help, that would be great. Uh, once again, um, the more the merrier. Uh, many hands make light work. And so I think it would be a tremendous encouragement to the Jobs as well uh, if we show up with a lot of people. I think that would be a tr tremendous encouragement to them. And uh, by the way, we need to encourage them. And so this is a big step they're taking, stepping up by faith. Of course, we're supporting them, supporting them through our prayers and uh, through our giving and faith promise. But let's encourage them. Uh, they're close. We can do it. And so um, if you can, we'll be here at 845 on Saturday. If you've got any questions, call me, call Pastor. Uh, we'll help you any way we can, all right? And don't forget our Rally in the Valley is coming up on the 29th. And uh, we'll have Brother Alton Beal with us from Ambassador Bible College. And so he's kind of filling in for Kenny. Kenny's coming uh, in November, and Alton's coming this month. They switched up a little bit, cover some things. But uh, we're excited about having Brother Beal. So be praying for that meeting, if you would, please. A lot of things going on in the month of October. Um, you see those information, that information there. We are trying to get a good group to go to this Harvest Rally at the Edge on the 7th. That's a Saturday. Um, I have to leave here pretty early in the morning. Uh, of course, they're talking to young people about that in, uh, in Blast. And so um, it's just a day. We'll go down early, come back. It's not, I think it's um, 9 to 5 or 10 to 5, whatever it is. Um, and so uh, $20, I think, per person is what, what it is. So we gave them um, actually forms to sign up for um, to register, that kind of stuff, uh, through Blast. So please um, really consider that and get your young person to that. We'll probably try to go to the, uh, the edge this summer for camp. We've got the mission trip scheduled uh, for June. And so Brother Jim Shetler. Uh, is going to be speaking the second teen week, which will be in July. So, Lord willing, we'll be able to go to teen week two in July at the edge. And so, um, let's be praying for these things, supporting these things if you can. That'd be great. And um, happy birthday this week to Wesley, Chris, Ross, and then happy anniversary uh, to Bruce and Chelsea. And then Pastor and Robin on Friday. Congratulations to them. 50 years. Boy, that's a, that's a big feat. Pastor, you put up a lot 50 years, hadn't you? No, I'm just kidding, Miss Robin. <laughs> I'm just messing with Miss Robin. Uh, hey, behind every man, good man's a good woman, right, Miss Robin? That's right. And we appreciate we appreciate them and love them and I'm grateful to God for them. So, once you stand with us one more time, and uh, Tony's gonna come lead us in one more song. He told me he felt like he'd been married for 12 minutes, <laughs> and, it was, and all that was underwater. <laughs> page 490. Page 490. All four verses. All four verses. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love, at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be 
By the way, the pastor didn't tell me that. Amen. Hey, I've been married a whole lot longer than I was ever single. And the uh, best thing that ever happened to me outside of salvation. Praise God for that. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. Uh, somebody said, how did you get there? Just stayed at it. That's the only way you can get at anything. Just stay at it. If you get good at it. Now you just have to keep practicing, amen? Every day brings new challenges, don't they? Amen? And that's right. And I, uh, I found a good wife, and hey, I have, a, I have a great, great thing. I have a good, goodly heritage, amen? Praise God for that. Now, uh, some prayer requests tonight, and certainly uh, would ask you to remember our neighbor, uh, G.P. Fisher, in prayer. Uh, as uh, he's trying to uh, get some help with this stroke, uh, pray for the uh, Chuck Burdall family uh, as he passed away. Uh, also be praying, if you will, for uh, Brother Dean Staten. And uh, tomorrow, uh, Orrin Aiken's uh, funeral will be at 11 o'clock at uh, Victor Baptist in Buena Vista. Uh, Brother Curtis's uncle, remember that in prayer, if you will. And then, of course, uh, uh, Ms. Stephanie wants us to continue to pray for Mike and Penny uh, Birch and the, their needs there. If you will, be praying for them, that God would help. Continue to pray for Ms. Billy Rachel, if you will, uh, there in uh, the uh, Brookdale home. Be be praying for her and Ms. Geneva, uh, that God would just help each one of these ladies. And uh, then, of course, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Coley Rochester, remember her in prayer also. And then I uh, remember our church in prayer, if you will. Uh, the work downstairs tonight, the uh, Sunday school, our Sunday school teachers, uh, and just be praying that God will just work there and help them. Uh, our nursing home ministry, be praying that God would uh, just help uh, those men and ladies that go there and minister on Sundays, be praying for them, if you will. That God would just uh, give them wisdom and uh, understanding of how to help and deal with uh, the people that are there. Amen. And then, of course, our missionaries tonight. And uh, I do think of Ms. Jolie Sox. Be praying for her, if you will, uh, for uh, Martha Deku. And, uh, uh, of course, that God would just uh, help her as they come home for 10 weeks for medical furlough. And then, of course, uh, be praying for, uh, uh, you know, the Black Blackburns, uh, both of them. Uh, Miss Blackburn has some. What in the world did I do with my card? I had it here. Uh, I must have lost it. Amen, Brother Mike and his dear wife. She has some back trouble, so be praying for her, if you will. Be praying God to give us wisdom about support uh, for them, and uh, that that God would just work in that very special way. And I would ask you to be praying for our college students, Isaac and McKenna Crown. Colton, Kaylin, Elena at uh, JMU, and Ms. Naomi uh, at Hiles Anderson. So remember these in prayer. Also, uh, if you would, remember uh, our preacher friends, that God would help them. I'd ask you to be praying, Brother Ron Bixler, uh, that uh, God would just uh, touch his body and help him help his church. Um, he's having a lot of uh, pain physically, and so remember Brother Ron in prayer, if you will, tonight, I think. Uh, Brother Joe Campbell, and uh, be praying for uh, <clears throat> Roger Wood. This is Eddie's brother. Be praying for him. Uh, God would help him. And then uh, also for uh, uh, 
uh, let's see who else. Uh, uh, somebody else I was thinking of today. Um, Barbara Pennington, amen. Be praying for her and call Breeden. All these folks have uh, cancer and need our prayers at this time, if you will. All right. Uh, any prayer requests that haven't been mentioned tonight, we'll just start right over here and work back. Anybody on this side? All right, Miss Peggy. Okay, all right. Who was it again, Ms. Peggy? That was Jolie Socks. Jolie, oh, Jolie Socks, okay. Amen. All right, that's great, isn't it? That's good news. Praise God for that. All right. Anybody else? Brother Eddie. Keep praying for your niece, for your brother. God just work in their lives and help them. Oh, brother, uh, brother, go ahead, brother. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Amen. Be praying for Mac, and, and God's will be done there. Amen. That's good, and. All right, anyone else? All right, on this side tonight. Anybody? Brother Will. Mm, great. They, that is painful. Be praying for Miss Melissa's dad. Uh, this need with these spots as they've been removed. The pain will get better. And uh, God just help. Miss Kathy. Well, I want to pray for uh, 5,000 people were lost in Libya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Thank God be praying for those in Libya, the earth was the flood. And then Morocco, Morocco had a, uh, an earthquake and uh, about 3,000 dead there. So be praying uh, for people around the world there. Amen. Uh, those countries desperately need the gospel, desperately need the Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, anyone else? Robin? Yes, Cash Lawson. Be praying for him and the need there with these, with his heart transplant, and of course just his health, being able to get home, get back to uh, home, so Mama can hold him. Amen. Uh, they, I don't know what, 160 days in the hospital. Yeah, so need to be praying for him. Amen. On that part. Anybody else tonight? Anybody? Miss Eric. Be praying for Judy Ashby uh, with cancer, uh, stage four. So be praying that God will just help there tonight. Amen. All right, anyone else? All right. Well, if you're able tonight, we'll uh, gather around the altar and we'll have a season of prayer and then I'll close in prayer.
Father, we do love you, and we do want to thank you for your grace, your goodness to us. Lord, you've heard these prayer requests tonight, and Lord, certainly, uh, Lord, we are needy people. We need thy guidance and thy help and strength in the day of trouble. And Lord, I just pray for the uh, Birdall family tonight, Lord, that you would uh, just minister to them as only you can. Lord, help them in their loss, strengthen them, give them wisdom for the days ahead. And for Mike and Penny Birch, pray you just, uh, Lord, work there as only you can. You'd encourage, you'd strengthen, you'd touch, Lord, as, uh, Lord, you see fit. And, Lord, uh, we do pray tonight for uh, G.P. Fisher. Pray you'd help him to recover. And, Lord, uh, just help him spiritually meet each need there. And, Lord, for uh, Eddie's niece and uh, for Eddie's brother, pray you'll just... Lord, work there as only you can. You might, uh, Lord, just meet their needs and, and Lord, strengthen, help for uh, Russ's uncle, Mac. Pray you'd help him tonight. And, uh, Lord, for uh, Melissa's dad with the uh, spots. Lord, pray you'll just, Lord, uh, touch his body. You'll raise him up as only you can. Lord, for a little cash, I pray tonight you'd help him. And, uh, Lord, for uh, Judy uh, Ashby with cancer, pray that, Lord... You would just, Lord, meet her needs. Guide the doctors. Give them wisdom. And, Lord, strengthen them as only, uh, Lord, uh, you're able to do. And, Lord, uh, from Miss Billy there in the uh, home, pray you'll help them, help her, Miss Geneva. <coughs> and, Lord, may you just work in a very special way in these lives. Lord, for our, our ministries here at the church tonight. Lord, the upcoming rally, I pray you would, Lord, just be with Brother Bill as he comes. And, Lord, for our Sunday school teachers, anoint them, guide them, give them wisdom as they uh, prepare and as they teach. And, Lord, may you help each one, Lord, to uh, just simply, Lord, give it our best for your glory. Lord, help us as we, Lord, uh, bring this uh, Reach America event to a close. Lord, may you, Lord, help us to saturate the uh, our, our area with the gospel. And Lord, may you just help us on Saturday as we go. I pray you, Lord, help us to be uh, able to, Lord, uh, just get a lot of literature out, invite a lot of people to church. And Lord, uh, just help us to be able to witness to people and share Christ with them. And Lord, we just come today. We need you. We ask that, Lord, you just, uh, God, Brother Lane, you touch him, you give him wisdom, you fill him with thy spirit tonight. And Lord, uh, just give him wisdom of Scripture that he might impart unto us uh, the truth that is needed for our lives. And we'll love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, take the word of God, if you would, please, and go with me to Acts chapter number 17. Acts chapter number 17. And we're talking about the declaration of the gospel. And boy, the early church surely declared it, no doubt about it. So much so that the Bible tells us in this passage of Scripture that they turned the world upside down. And um, I was looking at a time frame today. You know, Jesus gave them this command in Acts chapter number 1-8. Um, to go into all the world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other part of the earth. And he ascended, that was given on the day of his ascension, that he ascended back to his Father in heaven. And um, that was in AD 33, roughly, AD 33. If you've got a Schofield Reference Bible, this passage of Scripture is somewhere around AD 53, so 20 years. So in a 20-year time frame, I mean, good night, they got busy. They had an impact. They were making a difference. And uh, they took seriously what Jesus Christ told them. And everywhere they went, they were giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. And literally, literally the Bible says in, uh, in our passage here, in verse number um, 6, and it says, When they had found them, they drew Jason and certain brethren under the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down. Or come hither also. So they made a tremendous difference. They, they had a tremendous impact on, um, in just a very short time frame, a 20 year period. 
approximately 20 year period. And um, you know what? God hasn't changed. I mean, he's, he's still the same God. Uh, we have the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God. We have a, a more sure word of prophecy. We have the completed word of God. I mean, they didn't have the completed word of God. We have the completed word of God, the Bible, the, the full canon of scripture we hold in our hand. Matter of fact, we've got several copies of it. And we have the truth. And we, we mentioned when I introduced this message and gave the introduction um, here several weeks ago that we are in a race. And time is short. And we sang the song tonight. Jesus himself said he must work the work while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. That's what we were singing about tonight. Listen, every day that passes, the time gets shorter. We lose another day, another day of life. And um, who knows how long we're going to live, but it, it is a race against time. But we also said that not only are we racing against time, but we're racing with the truth. We have a copy of the Word of God. Thy word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father by me. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And so we have the truth. And uh, so we're not on this race against uh, time, but we are in a race with the truth. And I reminded you that we're also not not only in a race, but in a rivalry, a rivalry against the devil, a warfare against the devil, uh, a rivalry against the desires of this life. And boy, more and more, it seems like we're, we're tied to the world and uh, the world's got its claws wrapped up in us. So much so that we, we put the priority of the world over the priority of the things of God. And the early church, listen, they had, they had it straight, okay? They realized, they realized there was opposition, and in this passage of Scripture, you can see there's opposition. In verses 5 through 9, it's very easy to see that the early church, listen, they had some hurdles they had to, to jump. They faced some tremendous opposition uh, for the cause of Christ from religious people. That hasn't changed. Not one bit. And so they realized there was opposition, but they also realized that they had this obligation and this opportunity to do what God had commanded them to do. And it took him a little bit. Listen, God gave that command in Acts 1-8. And it took him a little bit to get out of there. He had to send persecution. And then they were scattered abroad. They went to those places they were supposed to go initially. And they did some things. And so, listen, we we can see very vividly and very clearly in Scripture as we look through the book of Acts. It's a great, great book, a transitional book. Um, The continuing Christ and the person of the Holy Spirit. And God begins to work in the church. God begins to move. God begins to uh, broaden the horizon, if you will. And the Gentiles come. And I mean, folks are getting saved. Churches are being planted. And God is doing amazing work. And the Bible says that these folks turned the world upside down. They had come thither there to Thessalonica. They made a difference. They, they had a tremendous impact Uh, in the world in which they live. We can have that same impact. God desires for us to have that impact. And so let me just give you some very specific things. I don't know that I'll give you all three of them tonight. We'll start off with just one of them. But what did the early church do to have this impact? I said in a short, brief period of time, in 20 years, Jesus ascended in Acts 1-8 in AD 33 approximately, And here we find ourselves in AD 53, 20 years later, and the Bible gives testimony that these guys had made a tremendous impact, a tremendous difference. How did they do that? Well, they realized they had an obligation. They realized they had opportunity, and they fought through the opposition that was there. And they did did three very specific things that the, the church can do today and that the church should be doing today to have an impact and to make a difference and to to literally uh, impact our world for Jesus Christ. Listen, we don't need less missionaries on the field. We need more missionaries. We don't need less churches than we had last year. We need more churches. But the truth of the matter is we have less missionaries and we have less churches. Well, whose fault is that? Well, it's surely surely not the non-believer's fault. I mean, it's God's people's fault. Why? Because, listen, God's given us the power of the Holy Spirit. He's given us His Word. He's given us the truth in which we have to follow and to abide by. But yet, yet, 
again, I think we're so tied to this old stinking world that we, we don't have our priorities where we ought to have them. And our priority ought to be Christ. Our priority ought to be the Lord Jesus. Our priorities ought to be the things of God. And um, let God be true and every man a liar. But what, what does God say and how are we to obey him? Well, the early church got a hold of it. And I believe they did three things specifically. I'm going to give, give probably just one tonight. But I believe one of the things that they did that impacted their generation for Christ. And, and, and 20 years after Jesus Christ uh, ascended back to his father after his death, after his burial, after his resurrection, after those 40 days that he walked upon this earth. He ascended back to his father in heaven. He gave that command in Acts chapter number 1 verse 8. And 20 years later, the Bible says these guys were having an impact on their known world for Christ because they turned it upside down. And that was the testimony of others about them. The truth of the gospel was going everywhere. And so I believe the very first thing that we can see that they did is that they established churches. I mean, they started churches. They, they planted churches. If you, if you look throughout the Bible, I mean, you can see... Uh, everywhere they went, a church here, a church there, a church here. They went to the synagogue and preached here and a pastor here. And Paul went back and confirmed the churches that he had planted and on his mission, missionary journey. But I believe the very first thing they did and, and what we need to be busy about doing is establishing or planting or starting churches. Now our last mission conference, we were trying to focus on America. We had, what, five missionaries that were... We're either, have they either started a church or are going to start a church. And this Saturday you have an opportunity to go help one of them, the Jobs. And we ought to go. But we ought to be in this business. We ought to be in this, uh, we ought to be busy about this matter of establishing churches, starting churches, planting churches. We understand that the church started with Christ and his disciples. And that it was empowered at Pentecost. Um... It started with the church in Jerusalem, and then it was Damascus and Samaria, Judea, Galilee, Caesarea, Antioch, Iconium, Derby, Lystra, Sicily, Syria, Philippi, Europe, Thessalonica. I mean, right down the line, all of those cities, they, they went, they started a church, they started a church, they planted a church, they established a church. Listen, Jesus said in Matthew 16, before he went to the cross, before he bled and died, he gave them this truth about the church. Jesus said, listen, and I say to these, talking to Peter, Simon Peter, he said, and I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, he said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus said, I will build my church. He didn't say he would build your church or that we would build his church. No, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's a, that's a promise you can bank on. You can count on it. So it's his church. and We get the wonderful privilege and the wonderful opportunity to serve in his church, to be a part of his church, the local church. And so they established churches. Jesus said, listen, the gates of hell are not going to prevail against my church. Um, in Acts 1 verse 8, we referred to the verse just, just a little bit ago. Jesus on the day of his ascension. Um, the day he ascended back to heaven, he told his followers this. This is the great commission according to the book of Acts. Five times it was given in Matthew, Mark, Luke. John in Acts. In Acts, Jesus himself said, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, excuse me, in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. That, that was their job. That's what they were to do, to go to these places Really, the known world and, and get the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be a witness. Give the truth. Pass on the body of doctrine. Give the gospel that was given to them. That's what 
doctrine is. I mean, Jesus gave the disciples doctrines. That's our beliefs and teachings. Those doctrines were to be passed along to others. And eventually we caught up with it. We have a copy of the Word of God full of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Our beliefs and teachings. And by the way, listen, uh, the Bible's our, our sole authority for faith and practice. I'm glad we have a Bible. I'm thankful for the Bible. God's Word, God's precious book divine. And so Jesus gave this command on the day that he ascended and told him to go into the uttermost part of the earth. Okay? In Acts chapter number 8, verses 1 through 5, flip over there with me. You're in chapter number 17. Flip over to chapter number 8, back just a couple of chapters. This was before the conversion of Saul, which would become Paul. He gets saved in the next chapter. But in this chapter, Saul, which is referring to Paul, the Bible says in verse number 1, and Saul was consenting unto his death, talking about Stephen. And at this time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Wait a minute, where did, where did Jesus tell them to go? He said, I want you to go to Jerusalem. They were already in Jerusalem, but they weren't moving out of Jerusalem. He said, go into Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. Well, God had to stir the nest a little bit, and that's what he did. So this persecution came, and the Bible says they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. They stayed there in Jerusalem. And the Bible says, And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation for him. Acts 8, 1, 2. I'm sorry, Acts 8, verse 2. And in verse number 3 of Acts chapter 8, And as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore they were scattered abroad, went everywhere, Preaching the word. And the Bible says in verse number 5, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So God, Jesus told them to go. <laughs> here he proclaimed and they, they go. They go to all Judea. They go to Samaria. And the Bible says here that they went everywhere preaching the word. And what happened? Churches were established. Doctrine was taught. Groups began to meet in, in every city and they were established as local churches. That's what a church is. It's, a, it's an ecclesia. It's a called out assembly. Just because they didn't meet in a, in a building with a steeple and an air conditioning heat and pews that don't mean they didn't have a church. No, there's many churches in our world today meeting in houses underground. I guess the easiest definition of a church is a, a group of Baptized believers that have voluntarily joined themselves together to carry out the Great Commission. That's what we're supposed to be doing here. So they went everywhere. Great havoc. I mean, Saul was wrecking havoc with the church, but God's promise was still there. Remember what God said? He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You can't destroy the church. You won't destroy the church. Because it's God's church. Acts chapter number 9, Saul becomes Paul. He gets saved on the road to Damascus. And in verse 31 of Acts chapter 9, the Bible says, Then had the churches rest. But they were saying, Hallelujah, praise God. I'm glad God got a hold of, I'm glad God got a hold of Saul's heart. They were skeptical at first, but the Bible says they had rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, do you see those last two words in Acts chapter number 9 verse number 31? And the churches, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were what? Do you see it? Multiplied. The church grew. 
Everywhere they went, there was a, a, a group of believers that voluntarily joined themselves together to do exactly what had happened to them. To carry out the Great Commission. To give the truth. On Paul's first missionary journey in Acts 14, over a couple of pages. Acts chapter number 14. You know in Acts chapter number 13, Paul and Barnabas get separated out. The Holy Ghost separates them. The church sends them. They begin this first missionary journey going all over the place with the gospel of Jesus Christ and planting churches. And in chapter number 14, verses number 23 through number 27, the Bible says, And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Adelia, and thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come, they had gathered the church together. They rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. So Paul and Barnabas, they went all over the place and they gave the gospel and they planted churches. And in Acts chapter number 16 and verse number 5, the Bible says, And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Imagine that. I mean, the churches were established in the faith. I mean, they got a hold of that doctrine that was taught to them. And they got grounded. They got solidified. They knew what they believed. <laughs> Amen. Half of God's people don't even know what they believe today. Because they won't get in the Bible. It's all right here in the Bible. But it says they were establishing the faith. And they increased in number daily. What did the early church do to turn the world upside down? They established churches. They started churches. They planted churches. And they were they're very specific about these kind of churches. The Bible says in um, Acts eleven twenty six. 26. You remember we looked at that. We'll just flip back there real quick. Acts 11. We don't have time to read the whole passage of Scripture, but this is talking about the church at Antioch, the new name. Verse number 19 says, Now when they were scattered abroad upon the persecution that rose about Stephen, they traveled as far as Phinehas and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. We go down through there. and Look what the Bible says in verse number 26. And when he had found him and brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So what kind of churches were established? Well, I believe they were separated churches. I believe there's a distinction. Listen, you, you, you could look at these churches that were established and you say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're not like us. They're not like the world. They're not, they're not of the same kind. There's something different. Matter of fact, they're like Christ. Let's just go ahead and call them Christians. Now, I don't know if they were being sarcastic about that and say, oh, they're like Christ, Christians. But nonetheless, they were so much like Christ that they were labeled as Christians. Christian means little Christ. So these churches that were established, I believe they were separated churches. They were churches where you could see folks that God was making a difference in their lives. I mean, things were changing. Perhaps places they used to go, they didn't go there anymore. Perhaps things they used to do, they, don't, they didn't do those things anymore. Perhaps it was things they used to say. They didn't say those things anymore. You heard the little song, right? We sang it at camp. There's been a great change yeah. since I've been born again. 
The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about? Don't make me sing it. <laughs> right, there, there was a dip, they, they were separated from the world and then to the Lord. Perhaps it was something about their speech. Perhaps it was their spirit. The way they conducted their lives. Perhaps it was where their family went. What they participated in. But whatever it was, they looked so much like Christ. And weren't associated so much with the world that they were called Christians. These were separated churches. How separated am I? How separated, I mean, can people, can people, can people see that there's a difference in my life? Can they see that there's a difference in my family? Or do they come to my house and see the same things on my wall that they see on their walls that don't know the Lord? I mean, a Christian home ought to have some Christian things, right? Christian people ought to listen to some Christian music. I'm not trying to rip on your music, but. Some of you need to watch the music you're listening to. Right. And you keep putting that garbage in. Right. Garbage in, garbage out. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Me and Erica's been going to the gym. We lost our mind. <laughs> Getting up at four in the morning and going to the gym and working out a little bit and feeling dead the rest of the day. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But man, I gotta put my earbuds in just because of the music that's there. But you know what? I just got one earbud in. Because I gotta I gotta listen to this here in case Erica calls for help. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So I try to put it in the ear, she's on the opposite side, you know. <clears throat> and uh, I just crank it up as loud as I can get it. And I just sing along there with, with my music. And don't listen to that music. We can't get completely away from it. There's no way you're gonna get completely because you're in the world. Right? But I don't have to have it in my home. It don't have to be playing in my car. Hey, when somebody pulls up beside me and they got this music playing like that, I want to roll my windows down and crank mine up as loud as I can too, just to overpower theirs. That's not the right spirit thing to do, but, you know, I'm just trying to be honest. But, hey, do they know there's a difference? I mean, am I separated enough to know, for them to know that, hey, there's something different about that fellow. There's something different about his family. Something different about the way they live. Hey, the churches that they established were separated churches. Not only were they separated churches, but they were schooling churches. I like that. Verse, same verse number 26. The Bible says, they assembled themselves with the church and did what? And taught much people. They were busy teaching people, schooling people about what Jesus had taught them. Jesus left them this body of doctrine. This doctrine, their, his beliefs and teachings. They're to pass it down, committed to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also, the Bible says in Timothy. So they were, they were churches that schooled people, that taught people. That's why we have a Sunday school. That's why we have a rally in the valley. That's why we have preaching. <laughs> And revival and missions conferences and things of that nature. Listen, because we want to teach people the Bible. And school people and and teach them God's word. Listen, you ought ought to have a home that's learning the Bible. You ought to learn to develop a devotional life. To spend time with God every single day. Make it a habit. Listen, it it ought to be so much so in your life that... Um, that if you miss God's word that day, something that just don't go right with you. I mean, there's something missing in your day. Yeah, because you've become so accustomed, you've become so used to meeting God and Him speaking to you through His word, you having communication with Him. Letting Him teach you through His word. The Holy Spirit's a great teacher. So these churches that were established were were separated churches. They were schooling churches. Go with me to Acts chapter number 2 and look at verse number 44. So one of the things very specifically they did that 
that turned the world upside down was to establish churches. Established churches, separated churches, schooling churches. And in Acts chapter number 2, I think we can find soul winning churches. Look at verse number 44, Acts chapter number 2. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple... And breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Bible says, and the Lord added daily to the church such as should be saved. Did you catch that? And the Lord added daily to the church such as should be saved. If somebody was being added to the church daily by getting saved, somebody was giving the gospel out. Somebody was giving the truth and the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I mean, you got to hear the gospel in order to believe it, right? How shall they hear without a preacher, the Bible says in the book of Romans. That don't mean somebody stands behind a pulpit. That means somebody's going to proclaim the truth, propagate the truth, deliver the truth of the gospel. They were churches that, that were busy about winning people to Christ. And the Bible says that every day somebody got saved. And the Lord added to the church, does it say daily in y'all's Bible? Daily? Yeah, so I, I'm right. Same, y'all got the right version, right? <laughs> daily. I don't know what other version is put in there. My Bible says daily, such as should be saved. Every, every day somebody's getting saved. So these churches that were established, they were separated churches. You could tell the difference in their life. Because they were so much like Christ. They taught other people. I mean, they were, they were teaching the doctrines that were taught to them. They were schooling others, teaching others. And they were about winning people to Christ. They were soul winning churches. They were out winning people to Christ. Telling people how to get saved. And if you walk through the... This was added to the church. Added, added. Multitudes. Men and women. Uh, We've seen it. I mean, people coming to Christ. Why? Because they were busy about giving the gospel of Jesus Christ out. These churches that were established... Turn the world upside down by being a separated church, a schooling church, a church that was busy winning souls to Christ. When's the last time you was able to lead somebody to Christ? Don't raise your hand. But the lane, when's the last time you led somebody to Christ? When's the last time you even tempted to win somebody to Christ and give the gospel? Listen, I know we live in a wicked world. But may God, may God increase our burden for lost people. I don't believe we have, have a long time left. I don't, know how, I don't know when the Lord's coming back. I have no idea. If I were to tell you I knew, you probably should get rid of me, preacher. <laughs> because the Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour. Yeah, all these evangelists that come on TV and, oh, I know when he's coming back. See you, buddy. You're not lining up with scripture. I don't know when he's coming back. But signs of the times are everywhere. I believe it's going to be soon. I mean, I think if you're in any tune with the Lord and with the things of God, I think you can almost sense it, can't you? I mean, can't we almost sense that things are going south in a hurry? And I know it was, it was bad then too. I understand that. And I'm just saying, even so come Lord Jesus. You know, I'm ready to meet him. And, um, but I believe if we can apply these truths in these final days in which we live to establish churches, separated churches, schooling churches, hey, we need to keep doing what we're doing here. Right. Building lives around scriptural truth. That's what they're doing downstairs tonight. Trying to teach kids the Bible that are not going to get taught the Bible that come in on, we, we bring children in on these, these buses and vans. Who's going to teach them the Bible if we don't? Who's going to teach them the doctrines of God if, if we don't? Who's going to teach them about Jesus if we don't? 
It most certainly going to be the public school. It's not going to be their homes because probably most of their homes don't even know Biden. You no, know, it's going to be churches like this right here that's teaching children, teaching adults, schooling them, and teaching them the truths of the Bible. And by the way, that's our obligation. God's commanded that we do that. So that's, that's what they did. That's one of the very first things that I think we can see very clearly that they did that turned the world upside down. They established churches, separated churches, schooling churches, churches that were soul winning churches. Yeah, they suffered. They went through some hardship. I mean, just it's on every page almost. Saul wrecking havoc. I mean, Satan doesn't like it. And he's going to continue to, to wreck havoc. Satan is. Because he's our adversary. But let's do all that we can. Oh, that's why you ought to be involved in, in missions. Unless God's called you to go and plant a church somewhere, you ought to be helping a church. I, th- I, think, I think it was Mike Fox that told me, he said, you're either the pastor or you're helping a pastor. We all can be helpers of the pastor. God's called him to lead the church, okay? We can all help and assist in doing our part at getting the gospel to, a, to the lost and dying world. And if, if, unless God's called us to go, we can get involved in missions and help give, help pray. What are we praying for the Jobs? What are we praying for the Bradleys? Uh, for, for the Deaf Church in o- Ohio? For the ones in New York? Chicago? All these places. There's many, many more. That's just in our own country. That's what America needs. America needs some Bible-believing, Bible-preaching churches if it's, going to, if it's going to be turned around. And that's debatable, even. Have we already gone too far? But nonetheless, it still needs churches to reach those that will, that will listen. Amen? And that's how they affected the world. That's how they had an impact. That's how they made a difference. They established churches. Father, help us tonight to be the Christian you desire for us to be. Separated from this world and unto the Lord. May the Holy Spirit of God be real to us. May we be sensitive to his leading, to his guiding. Father, in our everyday walk, from the the places we go, the things that we listen to, the way that we communicate, the things that we discuss, the things that we put in our eye gate and our ear gate, all that all develops the way that we think. May we saturate our minds with the things of God and realize that, Father, there's only one way and Jesus is the way. May we get serious about this matter of being separated from the world and through the Lord. May we get a hold of this truth about teaching others about it in our homes. Father, we can do that through simple family devotions, reading the Bible, the great stories of the Bible with our family, our children, our grandchildren, by winning people to Christ giving the message of the gospel to a lost and dying world, to those that will listen, passing out gospel tracts, realizing that, Father, there's going to be suffering, but, Father, we can cast all our care upon you, realizing you care for us. I pray that you'd be with this meeting on Saturday, be with the Jobs, uh, the group from here that's able to go and participate. Just fill us with thy spirit. Give us courage and boldness, Father, to not only just hang door hangers, invite people to church. But Father, if we get an opportunity to share the gospel, may we take it. May we be sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God and, and take that step to share the gospel. Read through that gospel track. Help us to be friendly. Help us to be sensitive, compassionate. Well, you said some having compassion, making a difference as we looked at on Sunday morning. May we have the mind of Christ, the compassion of Christ, to make the difference in this world in which you would like for us to make. Father, we certainly want to have an impact. And we certainly want to make a difference. And Father, with your spirit, with your help, would you please enable us to do that to the best of our ability with the short time that we have left. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.